Thank you. Good afternoon uh, to members of council and welcome to the special meeting of council of June the 22nd. Uh, I've called the meeting to order and I'll ask those who are in attendance if in their own special way uh, reflect uh, for a, silent, a moment of silent reflection, please. Thank you. We'll go on to the agenda. I need uh, approval of the agenda. You've all got a copy. I need a motion, please. Moved by Councillor Roots and second by Councillor McLean. All in favor? It is carried. Disclosure of pecuniary interest. Does any member wish to disclose any pecuniary interest in any of the matters before us today? Having seen none, approval of the min minutes of the special electronic meeting of June the 1st. The minutes have been distributed. Are there any errors or omissions to the minutes as distributed? Having seen none, then I need a motion to accept the minutes, please. Councillor Sabran, Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Service, all in favour? Most of any is carried. Thank you. With that, there is no presentations. We'll go on to bylaws. The first bylaw is bylaw. 134520, and I'll call on Karen to say a few words with regards to the bylaw before we go to first to second reading. Karen, if you could, please. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, yes, I do have report uh, number PL-7-20, uh, conditions for file B13-18 for Frank Durant. Uh, this was a zoning bylaw amendment and development agreement for part of lot five, range B, airport road, uh, for council's information. Uh, Mr. Durant was granted an approval uh, under file B13-18 uh, for a lot on Airport Road uh, under two conditions. The first being that Mr. Durant rezone uh, the property from rural to residential one. And the second condition is that the applicant enter, enter into a development agreement with the municipality, um, basically uh, to ensure that there is a, a warning placed on the, the property on title um, that gives out, uh, identifies potential issues uh, with aesthetic characteristics of the water supply. Uh, again, that agreement would be registered on title. Uh, so that's basically the purpose of the bylaw before you this afternoon. Uh, there will be a public meeting to deal with the zoning bylaw amendment at some point in the future. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so you've got bylaw 134520, a bylaw to authorize a development agreement with Mr. Frank Durant, be ready first and second time. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Carmody, Councillor McLean, and all in favor? It's carried. Bylaw 134520 being a bylaw to authorize a development agreement with Frank Durant. This constitutes first and second reading of bylaw 134520. And we'll go to bylaw 134520 to uh, need a mover and a second for a third reading, please. Councillor Sabran, seconded by Deputy Mayor Service. Discussion on the bylaw and the comments made by Karen. Any comments, questions, concerns with the bylaw? And seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed of any? It's carried. Thank you. Bylaw 134520 being a bylaw to authorize a development agreement with Frank Durant. This constitutes third and final reading of bylaw 134520. And we'll go to bylaw, <clears throat> excuse me, 134620. And once again, Karen, if you would, please, you have a few comments to make on the bylaw. Uh, yes, under report PL-9-20, Laurentian Highlands Subdivision Phase 1B. Uh, this is a lifting of part law control request for Block 46, Plan 49M69. Uh, block 46, Plan 49M69 is located on Zachary Street within the Laurentian Highlands subdivision, Phase 1B. Uh, the subject property is designated residential under the official plan and is zoned R1-E31 under the zoning bylaw. Uh, the permitted uses include single dwellings. 
Uh, the removal of part lot control will allow the creation of three lots, all of which meet the minimum lot area and frontage requirements of the uh, zoning bylaw. Uh, I have noted in my report that part one and four um, are to merge. Currently part four is owned by the town. Uh, it was part of um, a turning circle when the original development was taking place. Uh, so part four will be returned to the developer uh, at which time parts one and four will merge to create one lot. So again, we're looking at a total of three lots with the lifting of part lot control. Thank you. Thank you. So you, <clears throat> you have in front of you bylaw 1346-20, a bylaw to provide section 55 of the planning act, not apply to block 46. Uh, uh, be ready a first and second time. I need a motion, please. Mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Carmody, seconded by Councillor Sabra. All in favor? Opposed to any? It's carried. Bylaw 1346.20 being a bylaw to provide that section 50, subsection 5 of the Planning Act, not apply to Block 46, registered plan 49M69. This constitutes first and second reading of bylaw 1346.20. I need a move and a second for bylaw 1346-20 to be read a third time and passed. I need a move and a second, please. Councillor McLean, Councillor Roots. Discussion on the bylaw. Any comments or questions on the bylaw? Having seen none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Opposed of any? It's carried. Bylaw 1346.20 being a bylaw to provide that Section 50, Subsection 5 of the Planning Act not apply to Block 46, Registered Plan 49M69. This constitutes third and final reading of Bylaw 1346.20. Thank you. There's no correspondence. We'll go to staff reports. First staff reports is PW12-2020. Um, the Director of Public Works, David, are you going to comment on this? Uh, yes, Your Worship. Uh, so this tender was uh, prepared and advertised in the uh, local papers. Uh, four firms picked up the uh, tender package and three firms submitted uh, complete tender packages on the closing date of June 9th. Um, you have attached the uh, outline of the three bids that uh, were submitted and the uh, tender report provided by JP2G. Um, in uh, uh, so sh or coordination with the uh, treasurer, uh, you see how the um, the project is going to be funded um, through some of the uh, reserves, some of that was in the taxation for 2020, and then also from um, some of the funds that were earmarked for Portage Road, but because we are not completing that project this year, we can uh, allocate those projects to this uh, project. So the recommendation is to award uh, the tender uh, of the municipal parking lot upgrades to H and H construction in the amount of two hundred sixty-two thousand four hundred forty-six dollars ninety cents plus HST, and just open up to any questions. Sure. Okay, hello. before I ask for a mover and a second to accept the recommendation, are there any questions or comments that anyone from Council would like to make with regards to this? Councillor Carmody. Councillor sure. Carmody? Yes, okay, I just had to mute myself there. I should have been more on the ball. Uh, so with respect to the funding of this project, so we're looking at spending an additional 100 grand that was unbudgeted to complete this, this project this year. Now, my concern is for, and we're gonna use some money from Portage to get it done this year. Portage, when we were discussing at budget time, I recall being a very important infrastructure project that needed to go ahead this year. It was one of our more expensive uh, items that we had uh, infrastructure wise and we we went to lengths to make sure that that got the green light for this year. So now it's not gonna happen and we're gonna use funds from that project to make the parking lot go ahead. What does that mean for this project for Portage next year? 
because obviously it's going to be more expensive next year as well. I guess the question is sort of generic in a sense. What can we expect next year as far as infrastructure goes? Are we going to spend twice the money to get half the projects done? David, did you want to try and answer that? Yeah, I, you know, I, I guess, <clears throat> um, you know, no one has an indication of, of where prices will be going next year. Uh, if they will um, level off, uh, I suspect um, indications through uh, the uh, health industry is is that um, you know some of the measures that are have been put in place will remain uh, for the foreseeable future, and uh, so I, I suspect that these prices that we've received this year will again be um, there next year. Um, in regards to getting um, less work done for double the amount. Yeah, I, I don't know. It'll be part of the uh, the budget process that we discuss uh, at the later part of this year and into 2020 or 2021. Um, yeah, I don't I don't have any other comments other than that. Councilor Carmody, did you want to okay. come back? Yeah, no? I just. I guess I wanted a little clearer picture of just how critical Portage was. And are there any, like, is there a domino effect with Portage? If that doesn't get done, is there something else that's going to be on the, uh, the hit list next? Well, I think, I think it's fair to say, and I'm not speaking for everyone here, but from my point of view, I think that Portage vote has is something that is a priority. Um, and I think one of the challenges, of course, that we had with Portage Road and as you all know, was the amount of money that it came in over the the engineering estimates by a substantial amount of money. And it was felt at that time that it was just not within the scope of the funds available to us to do it uh, this particular year. Um, that is not necessarily uh, comforting, uh, but it was the reality of the, the tendering that we received on, on, on that project. Um, the funding was not available from the federal or provincial governments uh, either to help us out on that particular situation as well. But it was, um, help me, David, it was about a million dollars over the estimates that we had put in place during the budget process. Uh, am I correct in that? Yeah. Oh, yes, you're correct. Over a million dollars. Over a million dollars. And that was just seen as not uh, not within the, the financial scope of, of that. I'm assuming that part of the, the monies that were set aside will be going into some sort of reserve or at least a recommendation will be coming forward if it not already has uh, to put some of that in into the reserve to, to take a look at uh, Portage next year. Is, is, is that my understanding? No days here from finance, but I understand, David, is that, uh, is that the way it is? Yes, any uh, unspent dollars will uh, be... Uh, put into reserve. Thank you. And while I, I understand what you're saying, Councillor Carmody, um, that, that we're just going to have to uh, perhaps bite the bullet next year and get it done. Um, hopefully, hopefully it'll come in um, at a reasonable um, a budget price. I was disappointed that uh, the uh, the estimate came in so high above what we what we estimated it to to be but uh in fairness uh, there was just not that money available in the budget uh, this year to to complete the project councillor moans wanted to say something councillor moans uh, councillor moans yeah okay yeah. I'm on okay. Now. Am I okay then yep you're well, on i just want i just wanted to uh back up uh, James's comments, not only did we take money out for the parking lot, we also took some money out of that out for uh, the overrun on Golf Course Road, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm not, I'm with James, I'm really concerned about where we're going to get the, mon the funds to be able to do Portage next year. So we better get our thinking caps on and figure out a way that we can put some money aside to make up for the funds that we took out of that budget to cover off these other two projects this year so uh, yeah yeah 
and in all three projects that we've gone to tender on have come in way over some of the estimates that we've received. Uh, Portage Road, uh, not Portage, yeah, Portage was one, Golf Course Road was another, and of course this parking lot was another one that uh, was over over the engineering estimate. So that in itself is disappointing. Um, uh, I, I'm sure there's some rationale for that, but uh, uh, that, that's for our discussion at, at, a, at another time as far as this estimations are, uh, estimations are concerned. Councillor Sabra, then the Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay, good. Um, just um, by way of uh, the budget process, of course, um, budget was um, was discussed way back in January and um, consequently approved before COVID um, hit. And um, as um, the reports from JP2J indicate, um, that could have a, uh, an impact in why our prices are so high. My question is, um, and I don't know if it's ever been done in the past or if it's something we want to look at, but... Um, reopening the budget and taking a look at the tax rate. I mean, you know, next year we're just going to be hit um, with more projects. We're going to have more on our plates, which may, which may mean decisions to um, increase a tax rate um, beyond what may be seen as palatable or, or, or whatnot by, by ourselves um, on behalf of our residents. But at any rate, now, Mr. Mayor and, and the CAO, I, I'm just wondering if there's any uh, uh bylaw or any provincial uh, decision that says that we are unable to revisit our budget again and take a look at our tax rate. I guess that's my big question. Thank you. I need to defer that one to the CEO. Well, I would think, Councillor, at this point in time, the requirement for the municipality has been to actually enter our tax rates into the online uh, property tax analysis system, and that had to be done actually as of last Friday. So the tax rates are set for the year. Uh, the only thing that we could do at this point in time would be to uh, to make some reallocations within the budget, but leave that rate, uh, the rate is where it is. Um, so at this point in time, it would be a matter of uh, of the treasurer coming forward and providing you with option if you wish to, to move uh, items around. Um, with this particular project and, uh, and with Golf Course Road, we did have the available funds from Portage that we could make this work. So I, I still feel that we're on target with respect to the to keeping the budget in line with numbers that have already been endorsed by council. Uh, but, but if there is a desire to shuffle the deck, if you will, that's a different conversation altogether. But I would say your tax rates are in place now and Annette will be preparing uh, tax bills. Actually, she may be in the process of starting it right now. Councillor Sabra. Just by way of follow-up, um, thank you for that, Dan. Uh, I, we've talked at the council table over the years about uh, looking at having an emergency or a, a fund there where we just have some some money because we may need it from time to time. And it seems that for the last three or four years, we've had uh, one um, big issue um, happen after another. And we still don't, um, to my recollection, have that emergency fund. I certainly will be advocating for that um, at next year's budget cycle. So thank you. I, I think it would be important after, if, if Council in its wisdom decides to accept the, the recommendation of this uh, this uh, report from, from David, I think it would be important for the Treasurer to come forward uh, with with a, a review of what actually is left of, of any funding that may have been allocated to, uh, to Portage to give Council an understanding of uh, just exactly how much money could be put forward into to a, re, a reserve specifically for the Portage project uh, going forward. Um, we've taken a little bit from here, and as Councillor Mons has said, we've taken some to 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 take care of uh, the air, uh, the golf course road. There's some in here that we're taking care of. So I, I'm not quite sure myself, and I'm sure you are not. Uh, when I say collectively, know what uh, what uh, what funds were allocated for Porta for Portage and what money is actually left that could go into to a reserve going forward. It's unfortunate, uh, but uh, um, the the the, uh, the other option is something that I've certainly been very hesitant to to even recommend or even go down, and that's debt financing, and that is not something that I'm a big fan of at this point in time, but. Uh, it's maybe something that we have to look at in 2021. Deputy Mayor, service. Yeah, I was just wondering about these 
infrastructure contracts that we've been doing this year, I read reports that said they're coming in 25 to 35 percent above what they normally do because of the extra costs associated with the pandemic. Are we able to get a breakdown from the successful bidding companies to show where they are spending this extra money in terms of safety equipment or PPE or whatever it is that they need to spend extra money on for these uh, pandemic contracts? That I, I, I can't give you any estimate. I, I thought David did have a, a bit of a small report that indicated that social distancing and, uh, and perhaps even the cost of asphalt had, had contributed to this. Let me just say to, uh, to council as a whole, I have had communications with the County of Renfrew and they are, they're doing a substantial amount of work um, with the exception of one project everything has come in under the engineering estimates. It seems to me that, that uh, perhaps the, the estimates are a little bit understated in terms of uh, the numbers that we're seeing. Uh, we, we, we go on good faith as far as the numbers are concerned, uh, but uh, here's three that have been a little bit, uh, not a little bit, in some cases over quite a bit. Uh, and, and okay, you can blame some of that, uh, on the COVID-19 situation, but I don't know that you can blame uh, COVID-19, for example, over a million dollars uh, over the estimate for Portage and $500,000 over uh, for uh, Golf Course Road. So uh, there is some in there. Perhaps uh, it, it's, it's a, a, not, a time to be a little bit more uh, aggressive when we're taking a look at some of our uh, the estimates that, that, that we're actually seeing. Council in its wisdom uh, has gone forward at the beginning of any uh, any year and tried to get their budgets in place so that we can go out early, so that we can get the benefit of uh, of good pricing. And it seems this is somewhat backfired on us this year. Perhaps everybody else is doing the same thing. I'm not quite sure, but uh, I, I think we we have to take a little bit more of an aggressive look at some of the estimates that we that we've been receiving. Councillor Mons. Councillor Mons. Can you hear me, Dan? Yeah. Okay, I, it, I just want to elaborate on the report that was put out on this project by JP2G. And they contradict themselves here because, first of all, I say it's a 15% increase due to the COVID situation. Then the next paragraph, they go on to say the additional 15% seems to be primarily embedded in the following items, earth excavation, granular A, and storm sewer. So you can't have it both ways. I, I just understand, don't understand the report when it comes to that point where the, where the overrun it, uh, comes from. But there's nothing sure. we're gonna do about it at this point in time, but uh, it's interesting. Well, I, I, I think that's, that's what, I, what I said, Councillor, that uh, perhaps we have to be a little bit more aggressive in taking a look at uh, some of these estimates and where, where they're, they're coming from and how, uh, how they arrive at that. Um, you know, even, even the tender prices that we see on this report, there's quite a swing from the high one to the low one uh, and, and, and on these, uh, these reports. But I don't disagree with you. 15% is not... Uh, uh, in, in the case of, uh, of Portage, a million dollars. So I think we had uh, lessons learned here and we're, we're going to have to take another long, hard look. At. David, do you have anything you want to comment on at this point in time with regards to the discussion that we've had uh, at this point? Yeah, I, I guess uh, just, uh, I guess, to the fact in, in regards to the, the estimating. So the estimating is based on um, the previous year um, projects. Um, and, you know, if council recalls, actually the last couple of years, every, almost every project came in probably 10 to 15% under budget. And um, so, and, and each su substantial year is, is the same way. So they're, they base their their estimates on the previous year. Um, and so that's where the, the numbers come from. 
you can only go down uh, so many years and, and then it will catch up to you. So I, I think that's what's happening. It's basically a reset um, in regards to the, the engineering estimate. Um, so in regards to the tender report, uh, there is no line item that is COVID-19 or health and safety. And uh, so where you'll see it reflected is uh, basically the time that it takes, takes to do certain activities. And uh, so in regards to the report, it's just uh, itemizing where in the tender that uh, some of the times uh, to and, and labor to do activities is higher than what the estimate was. Um, and so, you know, in regards to earth excavation, you know, if you have to wear a mask and you have to social distance, um, and uh, there's certain screening activities that have to be done. That certainly would affect that line item. Same with the granules and the uh, this, the granules is probably just a, a material cost um, item. And then the installation of the storm sewer. Again, it's going to take a lot longer uh, to install um, storm infrastructure uh, with the proper PPE and the proper distancing and the screening than it would in previous years. So that's, so it, it, the report does, is correct in regards to it was 15% higher and they've explained where it was. There are no, it, there is no specific line item for COVID-19. So you can't isolate where, where it comes from. Uh, in previous reports, it's, it's been sometimes the um, AC in regards to the asphalt. Uh, sometimes it's been the structures um, and, um, you know, and, you know, all the other requirements are, are buried elsewhere within the, the tender. So I don't think that you can point and, and pull out one specific item and say, yeah, that's where it all is. It's, it's basically sprinkled throughout. Um, it, it, in essence, it's, it's, you know, similar to, you know, what we're dealing with in our daily life, it takes longer to do things. And so that's the reflection um, in the tenders that we've received. Okay, thank you for the comments on this report. So just before we go for uh, uh, a mover and a second to accept the, re the, the recommendation, there's direction to staff. I, I think that you would like to see uh, to, for council's benefit uh, uh, the, uh, the money that was allocated to Portage uh, and a report from the treasurer and through the CEO and David uh, as to what uh, money is now going to go into reserves are allocated back into uh, the Portage project for 2021. And do I understand that's what uh, that uh, staff is going to be directed to, to do and bring back a report to us? Is that correct? I see everybody's head is nodding. Okay, fair enough. With that then, um, if there's uh, uh, someone out there watching or can give me a I need a mover and a seconder for the uh, the report uh, to award the tender for the municipal parking lot. I need a mover and a seconder for the report, please. Councillor Sabran, seconded by Deputy Mayor Service. We've had a fairly good discussion, but is there any are there any other questions on this? If not, I'll call for the vote. All those in favour. One, two, three, four, five, post. One, it's carried, thank you. Uh, where are we now, number? Consent application, PL 06, 2020. Karen, did you want to talk to this one too? Uh, yes, please. Uh, yes, this is a consent application B73-19. It's a long-term lease. 1048279 Ontario, Inc. Care of Sandy Agarwal and the TDL Group Corp. Tim Hortons. 3381 Petawawa Boulevard. Part of Lot 21, Concession 7 and 8. Recommendation that Council supports the granting of the consent in order to accommodate a long-term lease between the landlord and the TDL group. The subject property will continue to be used by the existing restaurant and drive-through. 
Uh, basically, the application is for a lease uh, for a period of 21 years or greater. Uh, we don't have the actual details of that lease, but that's between the landlord and the TDL group. Uh, it's to allow the tenant to remain in this current location. Um, there is currently, as you know, a Tim Hortons located on this property. Um, the lease is for 0 0.38 hectares of land uh, with 34 meters of uh, road frontage on Petawawa Boulevard. Uh, the property is actually accessed by Petawawa Boulevard as well as a small portion of Ellard Street. Uh, and again, there's no propo proposed change to the retained lands. Uh, I did provide you with a report from an Ottawa law firm that speaks to uh, registering a notice of lease as well as the Planning Act compliance. Um, this, from the town standpoint, is truly just an administrative type request, and there are no existing or proposed changes to the property. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Are there any questions of the report before I ask for a mover and a seconder? And then I need a mover and a second to accept the report. Uh, Councillor Roots, Councillor McLean. Uh, it's moved and seconded that council supports the granting of the consent in order to accommodate a long-term lease between the landlord and the TDL group for the tenant. The subject property will continue to be used by the existing restaurant and drive through Any questions? I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Cons Councillor Mons, did you have a question? Uh, I'm just going to ask Karen, has there been any discussion about selling that piece of property to the uh, landowner? I know that's Ellard Street, and I don't know whether we have infrastructure in there, or is there a reason why we are hanging on to it? Hanging on to Ellard Street? Yes. Uh, there was a portion that was sold to the actual owner. Um, I don't know of the reason why we necessarily need to maintain that ex the existing or remaining stub, if you will. Um, there may be infrastructure. I would have to defer that to uh, Public Works. Just curious, that's all. Yeah. Okay. Further questions? And I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Opposed of any? It's carried. PL 08 2020. Karen, please. Uh, yes, this is a consent application for Brian Eichstead, part of lot 12, concession 6, Murphy Road. The council supports the granting of severances under files B108 slash 19 and B109 slash 19 on the following condition that the severed lots be rezoned from rural to residential one. Uh, the purpose and effect of the application is to sever two 0 0.43 hectare lots that are to be used for residential purposes. Uh, the retained lands, 77.57 um, hectares in size, uh, includes lands designated rural, uh, environmental protection, as well as lands located within the buffer area of the provincially significant wetlands. Uh, the retained lands is zoned Rural Environmental Protection and Provincially Significant Wetlands, so PSWE1. Uh, basically, the consent report does note that there are no provincially significant planning issues associated with the uh, two applications. Uh, the applicant does have to satisfy the Public Works Department with respect to access off Murphy Road. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Any questions on the report? Councillor Sabrin, then Councillor Carmody. Can't hear you, Councillor. Councillor, we cannot hear you. Councillor Sabrin, I've lost your telephone call. Well, let's go to Councillor Carmody and we'll see if we can get back to you in the meantime, Councillor Sabrin. Okay. Councillor Carmody. Thank you, Mayor Sweet. Uh, I have a couple of uh, things that I'd like to discuss regarding these severances. So a few years back, Murphy was a 60 kilometer road for the entire stretch of it. And 
So this may be more than a few years ago, maybe a dozen, but council changed the speed limit from 60 to 80. And if I recall correctly, part of the rationale for doing so was that there were no uh, residences on the road at the time, of which there were none. So since that time, three residences have been built on Murphy. And there are currently another two or three lots for sale. And now we're proposing an additional two severances on Murphy. So Murphy is not a great road for pedestrians and walking and that. And what we're looking at is definitely going to see an increase in the number of pedestrians, the number of people on bikes, the number of kids playing on a dump truck haul route. So have we given any consideration to the fact, or is any consideration given to the fact in the Planning Act for the issuance of severances on haul routes for uh, for aggregate operations like what we have here. And Murphy is a, a road that is fairly narrow. It's got deep ditches. There are several locations where there are guardrails along the side of the road to prevent vehicles from sliding into, into very deep ditches. And those guardrails make for a very small shoulder on the road, which when you get large trucks and people all in the same zone, you've got safety issues here. And those, those are my concerns with the direction that we're headed here. And uh, there are likely to be more uh, residences built beyond these two uh, if, that, if those other lands closer to the highway ever get developed. But now, mind you, they wouldn't be nearly as big an issue, but... Uh, those are certainly my concerns. I, I think that uh, we could be proactive here in uh, addressing some of these things, like perhaps even considering dropping that speed limit again to 60. Um, so you're asking the question of the planning or public works or both? Uh, uh, the, from the planning point of view, you wanted to know if there's anything in the act that restricts the, the speed limits? Uh, on a haul route, is that what I get from that? Is that one of your questions? One of the questions is exactly that. Is there any consideration given in the Planning Act to uh, issuing these severances on roads that are in fact haul routes? I'll need to direct that to either David or uh, to, to Karen. Karen from a planning point of view and David from, uh, from a highways point of view. Uh, yeah, with respect from um a planning point of view, uh, we actually defer to the public works in terms of an access. Um, Councillor Carmody did mention about additional severances that could potentially occur closer to the highway. Um, in fact, we are slated to have a meeting with MTO uh, because that entrance, um, you'll remember several years back, we did have severances with respect to another um, individual who was basically, they're being denied building permits because they're too close to the MTO. There needs to be a, a, a service access road created in order to, to um, um, access the lots. Um, MTO is very strict in terms of the creation of additional lots close to, to that highway. Uh, we wanna ensure that we're going to have access from Murphy Road onto the highway and that there's not going to be basically a, uh, a bridge and a flyover of, of 17. So um, there are restrictions in place with respect to additional severances closer. However, these two severances are outside of the MTO concerns. Thank you. I'm not sure if that's answered everything. David, do you have any comments from a roads point of view? Yeah, so in, in regards to the roads, yeah, certainly we could run it through the uh, the TAC guideline uh, to see uh, if it warrants to be reduced from the 80. 
Um, and um, yeah, and we can take a look at that. You know, so, so certain things haven't changed, like in regards to the geometry, horizontal or vertical, um, the lane width, uh, roadside hazards. So none of that has changed. Uh, maybe our approach in regards to pedestrian and cyclist uh, exposure has changed just because of the number of uh, houses that are um, yeah, on there now. And um, and maybe the, um, obviously the, the um, intersection with private um, um, uh, driveways, that certainly has changed. So, uh, so there's a, a couple of the criteria within the TAC guideline have changed. So I'm not sure if that's enough to swing it back to uh, 60, but certainly we can review that and, and provide a report to council. Fair enough. Further comments? Then I need to move on a second to accept the uh, the uh, recommendation of PL 820. Mr. Mayor, uh, Councillor Saverin is back uh, and, and is able oh. to comment, if you will. Okay, thank you. I'm oh, sorry. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry about that. My phone seemed to kick me out. Anyways, um, okay. my question was in regards um, through you to uh, the planner um, with respect to uh, future potential severances and impact on Murphy Roads. And I believe that are these the first of the severances on that parcel of land or should we be expecting potentially more? And that question may have been answered. Thank you. Okay. There was one previous severance um, granted on the this particular property. Uh, so we've got two additional now and there is there is a potential if they meet the uh, guidelines within their official plan for three additional consents. Okay, fair enough, thank you. Any further questions? Then I need a mover and a second to accept the report and the recommendation. Councillor Roots, seconded by Councillor Sabra. There's no discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Opposed of any? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, PL 1020, Zoning Bylaw Amendments, Addition of Definitions. Karen, are you speaking to this? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, th this report is provided for information purposes only. Uh, we will be looking forward to um, a public meeting, hopefully in the near future. Uh, these definitions are very important to us. Um, the purpose and effect of the zoning bylaw amendment is to add five terms to our zoning bylaw. Um, the first three terms have to deal uh, specifically with the container market. Uh, we wanted to be very clear in creating these definitions that uh, people didn't think that they could simply purchase a shipping container and place it on their property and that would meet our guidelines. Uh, there is... Um, we wanted to be very specific in the types of containers that could be used. Uh, the development will allow for uh, maximum or sorry, a minimum of five shipping containers um, and then or a con combination of shipping containers, mobile refreshment vehicles and modular units. Uh, a shipping container market uh, does require site plan approval through council. Uh, and individuals will be required to enter into a development agreement with the town. So the first definition, container market, <clears throat> excuse me, means a commercial establishment consisting of a minimum of five modified shipping containers and or combination of mod modified shipping containers, mobile refreshment vehicles, and modular units planned and designed to create a particular sense of place supporting and enhancing the business operating therein. Our second definition, mobile refreshment vehicle, means any temporary or permanently stationed motor vehicle, trailer or structure, where food and or refreshments may be cooked, carried or offered for sale to the general public. Uh, modular unit means any box style modular structure constructed off site under controlled plant conditions and using compliant code materials and such unit is designed to be reused and repurposed multiple times and for the purpose of being transported to different sites. So those are the, the three specific to the container market. Uh, two additional definitions that we also wanted to include uh, are the microbrewery or brew pub and micro distillery. 
We've had a number of pre-consultations on these types of businesses. Um, the, a brew pub and a micro distillery, these are not new. However, we're finding that there's definitely a gap in the zoning bylaw and we want to rectify that at this point in time. Uh, if a business comes forward and they want to um, uh, run within the town of Petawawa, we want to make sure that these uh, definitions are in place and there's not a site-specific zoning bylaw that's required. So we are uh, looking to make these definitions uh, basically uh, as of right in the commercial zone. So the microbrewery or brew pub includes a place used for small scale and independent manufacturing of specialty or craft beer or wine produced for retail sale and consumption off premises or on site consumption where located in combination with a permitted restaurant or tavern. Uh, micro distillery means a place used for the small scale and independent manufacturing of alcohol by distillation including the retail sales of alcohol meant for consumption off premises or on site consumption where located in a permitted restaurant or tavern. So again, we are, um, the zoning bylaw is to add these definitions specifically within the commercial zone as well as our definitions. Thank you. This is general commercial? Uh, it's straight commercial. A commercial. Okay. C zone, yes. C zone, okay, fair enough. Thank you. This is an information meeting or, or report, I should say. Any questions? Information, comments, nothing. So it will receive this as information. And as Karen has indicated, there will be a public meeting uh, in the near future, hopefully when we're out from underneath this COVID-19 situation and we can uh, start gathering in a normal public meeting scenario so uh, that is that that meeting has yet to be this uh, to be determined but if there's no questions we'll just receive this as information at this point in time the next one is pl 1120 Karen, uh, yes please. this uh, zoning bylaw amendment temporary use bylaw part of lot 21 concession 7 known as 11 norman street being block a on plan 395 and block A on plan 425. Again, this report is provided for information purposes and there will be a public meeting at some point in the future. Um, there is no secret, obviously, um, there is a need for low cost commercial retail space within our municipality. Um, council knows that there is uh, limited available leasable space within our town. Uh, and we, we do have an issue, no, traditional downtown core, if you will. So the, that reality continues to come back to us and, and there are, this does create some difficulties for our small businesses. So a container market was proposed as an excellent opportunity for small businesses um, to create and, and build their brand from, from a container market and create that customer experience uh, from a small space um, you know, different from a regular retail store. Uh, staff have completed our collaboration with our consultant in regards to the pilot container market development guidelines. Uh, we are currently working on an actual site plan that will be uh, presented to you along with these guidelines um, in the near future. Um, our economic development officer is working very hard uh, to bring this to council. Uh, the purpose of the amendment is, again, to permit that pilot container market. I did provide you the definition. Again, the, the container market, uh, modified shipping containers or a combination of modified shipping containers, mobile refreshment vehicles and modular units uh, can be uh, considered as part of a container market. Uh, the effect of the amendment is to rezone the lands uh, currently at 11 Norman Benke. Uh, from community facility to community facility temporary, and then from open space to open space temporary. Uh, the purpose of temporary use would permit for a maximum of three years uh, with the ability for council to extend that for another three years. Um, I did provide you with a copy of the draft bylaw. 
Um, I will note also under uh, temporary use section of the official plan, uh, section 20.8, in evaluating uh, the temporary use bylaw, council should look to number one, the proposed use should be of a temporary nature. And number two, the proposed use shall not be incompatible with adjacent land uses and the character of the surrounding neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kurt. Yeah, this is, uh, is as another information item, and as Karen has said, a public meeting will be scheduled in the very near future as soon as we can get uh, get uh, back to normal way of doing business. But in the meantime, are there any questions or comments with regards to, to this? Having seen none, then again, we'll receive that as information. Thank you very much, Karen. Councillor reports. Does any member of council wish to tell us, uh, rather than go round the, the table, so to speak, and, uh, anything happening out there that you, know, you wish to, uh, Councillor Mons. Councillor Mons. Yes, uh, I'd just like to report that Murray and I uh, participated in a Zoom meeting with the airport uh, last week. And just for general information, uh, as of March 31st, uh, they reduced their staff, uh, but then they got a 100% uh, grant for a summer student. So they brought in a summer student to cut grass and so on and so forth. Uh, we did have a, a minor uh, accident out there. Uh, the nose, nose gear on a small plane collapsed during a uh, landing, but uh, there was nothing serious. and. Uh, there was no injuries uh, that's been taken care of. Um, business is actually, uh, despite COVID-19, business has been pretty brisk. Uh, with COVID-19, there's been a few uh, flights in and out. The MNRF have been busy because it's been so hot and dry. So they've been using the uh, facility uh, quite a bit. Uh, the garrison has been continuing with uh, exercises with their helicopters and so on and so forth. There's a couple uh, CF-130s in there and out uh, the last couple of weeks. And medevac has been in and uh, survey crews have been in and out. So all in all, uh, so far, the airport has been uh, doing quite well uh, despite the COVID-19. The one other outstanding issue at this point in time is our fuel tanks, which we were planning to replace this year. We're still having problems getting an official report out of the people that um, did the inspection. We did have some problems with the, uh, the uh, protection of the tanks, uh, cathodic protection system. Uh, However, we have made a decision already that uh, we won't be replacing the tanks this year. We'll leave that project going out until uh, next year because the tanks seem to be in good enough shape for, to, uh, to get through another year for sure. So other than that, things are uh, as normal. I don't know, Murray, did you want to say anything? Um, okay. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Roots, if you've got something to add. Uh, I think uh, Councillor Mones has hit everything. Uh, just one uh, other point I'd like to mention is the uh, new hangar is almost completed. Uh, there's just a few little uh, uh, little projects that have to be uh, uh, completed there. But other than that, that's that uh, hangar is almost uh, ready to go, which is good to see. Thank you. And, and can someone tell me, or Council, what they're going to use that hangar for? Right Councillor Mones. Right now, the... Uh, we're in, a, we're in the process of finalizing a, uh, a lease agreement for the uh, leasing of the original hangar. So all of the planes that we have stored in the original hangar will then move over to the new hangar. Mm -hmm. So that we're just finalizing the, uh, the touches on that. So hopefully the, the old hangar, which is the larger of the two, will be leased out and the... Uh, the lease agreement has uh, enough in it that uh, it'll more than pay for the uh, the new hangar in the okay. future. Fair enough. Thank you. Further from anybody on council, there's Councillor Roots again. 
Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Sweet. I just want to uh, mention to Council that uh, I continue to work weekly with the uh, Festival Hall manager. It's a bit of a challenge to uh, reschedule some of these events that have been well, now moved to the fall and to the uh, past the winter and maybe into 221. And we're constantly uh, gathering information about uh, uh, grant applications for the facility and the uh, theater chairs. It's something that we still continue to uh, work with the suppliers and gather pricing uh, estimates and stuff like that. So as uh, we progress on this project, I'll keep uh, yourself and council up to date on that. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Shabran. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to report that uh, the Petawawa Business Advisory Network uh, held a meeting um, on the 9th of uh, June and uh, all were in attendance and uh, mostly updates with respect to COVID, the challenges and opportunities that are facing businesses with the reopening schedule, that kind of thing. And also, I uh, just want to remind folks that uh, the uh, 12 Days to Canada giveaway was launched and uh, hopefully uh, folks are, uh, are uh, getting ready to uh, either participate in that or, or uh, patronize the businesses and hopefully uh, win some of that uh, that loot. So uh, anyway, things, lots of stuff still happening in our business community and um, lots of initiatives uh, proposed uh, for the future and, and this new way of doing business. Thanks very much. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, uh, concept uh, right there. But uh, And just as part of that, uh, Christine's not the uh, a person to let the grass grow under her feet. Uh, uh, with that, I just sent out this afternoon uh, an initiative uh, that uh, I've asked all members of council to take a look at to assist uh, with uh, our local businesses. It, it, it's kind of tailored to each councillor's particular theme. Uh, for example, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about golf. And so um, for, for me, I, I want to give out $200 to to a golf course in, in town to someone within the community. And um, uh, there is, uh, uh, Councillor Carmody likes uh, the gardening. So there's something for him to, to take a look at. Uh, and I think Councillor Sabrin, I think you're into uh, to uh, maybe uh, the, our four-legged friends and things like that. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of things, but please take a look at that. And uh, it's to help out the local excuse me, the local businesses as much as we can, I think is a great idea. Uh, and as I say, that's just another one. Christine's gone by by the 12 days. She's now working on something else. So there you go. But I see Deputy Mayor Service had his hand up. Sir, De Deputy Mayor. <clears throat> Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just to give you an update on the library, tomorrow we have a meeting to discuss the next stage of the opening of the library. Uh, up to this point, Patrons have been able to email or phone in and then go and pick up their, their items at the side door. So tomorrow we're going to discuss the next phase, which will allow patrons to actually physically enter the library. Uh, an update on the Hall of Fame, Petawawa Sports and Entertainment Hall of Fame. We've moved the ceremony to June 2021. Uh, our volunteer group has removed over 100 stumps from the upper trail and the Petawawa Terrace Trail with the cooperation of Parks Ontario. Uh, I've participated in two bicycle-friendly community Zoom meetings. Uh, there's some pretty interesting ideas coming forward in terms of making our community more cycle-friendly. So I think in the near future you'll see community services division come forward with some new exciting ideas about cycling trails and paved shoulders and other things. There seems to be a bit of frustration in terms of working with the county and the roads that they maintain within our community. And perhaps if there was a way that we could sit down with Renford County before they design the roads within our community so that we could move forward with some of these cycle friendly initiatives. Uh, for example, a road like Murphy Road, which I know is coming up soon, rather than them doing what they're going to do and then us working around their design, if we could sit down with them before, during the design phase, uh, we could help move our cycle-friendly initiatives forward a little easier, I guess. And finally, I'd just like to congratulate all of our high school graduates. They're going to go through some different types of ceremonies this year. So to all of our grade 12 students in Petawawa, congratulations on your little different 2020 grad. 
Okay, fair enough. Further from members of council. Okay, so I did uh, just to follow up on the deputy mayor. I did make a video uh, for uh, uh, for the Valor School graduation. I, I, I'm not quite sure when the graduation ceremony is. I I did that last uh, Friday, uh, congratulating them. It's a little different uh, doing that. Uh, over video, but nonetheless, uh, wish them all the very best and every success. And uh, they've worked hard to get to where they are after four years of being at Valor and wish them every success going forward, plus the student, plus the, the teachers for bringing them to that uh, that, that, that date and, and time, and also uh, to the parents for supporting these kids. So uh, all in all, uh, good job to each and every one of these kids uh, that uh, are going forward into the great big world out there whether it's in the business community or wherever they, they choose to go. Um, the trail, has the, the access through the base has been signed by the, by the, uh, the colonel. Uh, so now the Algonquin Trail will eventually be, uh, be uh, taken. It is now able to be accessed, although it's not open at this point in time because there is some work still to be done. On, on, on the trail where, where we're going through it. But nonetheless, the lease has been signed and the agreement has, is now in place uh, after a number of years of getting it down. It's a five-year lease with an option for a further five years, but nonetheless, it's, it's moving that ahead for us. So that's, uh, that's all good news. I had a meeting uh, with uh, the Minister of um, Natural Resources along with the warden and a couple of others with regards to the official plan and the provincial policy statement. Um, and you'll hear more about that uh, as soon as we get some more information back from, from the, 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 uh, the province on, on, on how that impacts the town of Petawawa. Uh, there are some things in there that are a little bit awkward uh, and we're not quite sure how they will impact us. Uh, there's been a fair amount of pushback by myself as chair of the development property group uh, and uh, working with the the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, you did get a copy of a, a printout of the actual presentations that were made as far as the provincial policy statement is concerned and our official plan. So you'll hear from uh, from the county, we'll bring them in along with Karen to, to go over and give you um, more than in the weeds type of situation for the official plan and the provincial policy statement as it impacts um, the town of Petawawa going forward. It, uh, it's an important document and one that uh, we need to have better understanding. It will have some challenges for any growth and development in, in the community. That's what I've been doing the last little while. Um, need a motion uh, to uh, confirm the meeting. Uh, uh, I need a motion for second, third reading, please. Councillor Root, seconded by Councillor Carmody. All in favor? It's carried. Bylaw 1347-20, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of Council at its special emergency electronic meeting held on June 22nd, 2020. This constitutes first, second, third reading short of bylaw 1347-20. Can I need a motion to adjourn, please? Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor McLean. All in favour? This meeting is adjourned. Deputy Mayor, could you just stay on the line? I want